This is key number 24. I did it. <laughs> I got to the last video. Not that this is going to be my last video, but you know what I mean? I set out to make 24 videos and <laughs> I actually did it. I didn't do it in 24 days, but the timing worked out fantastically because I made the first one of 24 on the full moon in Aries. And since I missed a few days, it is now the full moon in Taurus. And today is a full moon lunar eclipse. So, and what's crazy is that this whole journey in the bigger scheme of things, I actually started, you know, six months ago on the full moon in Scorpio when I posted, when I sat right here for the first time and recorded my Starseed Awakening story. And that like <laughs> that started this this whole thing I've been on six months ago at the other side of this Scorpio Taurus axis. Really interesting. Um, so <laughs> key number 24 is long. I, I haven't figured out a way to shorten it. So let me see if I can just <laughs> remember, <laughs> re, re, re convey the, the message for today. Talk to the world like you are talking to yourself. This is how you find yourself in the world. It brings yourself forth. And along with this came like this really, really vis visceral sensation that, that I experienced. I, I don't even know how to put it into words, but it was like I could feel <laughs> the, the, the sensation was I could feel that everything I can perceive in my external reality is me, like is me. And that if I can interface with my reality as if really from the place of understanding that everything is me, then that changes everything. Because if I interface with my reality, assuming that it is not me, assuming that it is against me or assuming that it is out to get me or to control me or do bad things to me, then all, or even if I, even if I am just trying to live up to expectations, right? Even if I am just trying to make someone happy or do what I think somebody wants me to do or anything like that. If I'm trying to conform, um, all, all that, that I, I had this, like, you know, of course we all know that, you know, conforming and people pleasing is bad, but I really like understood on an energetic level, how damaging to reality that is. I, I could feel how it just creates distortions upon distortions upon distortions upon distortions that ripple out through the whole universe. Like no, nothing can, it's like this cascade of madness, <laughs> okay? This cascade of madness. It's like, imagine being in a fun house and you're seeing all these distorted reflections of yourself. And imagine if you forgot that they were you and you started reacting to them, you know, with real fear or with anything, any kind of reaction, you're just creating this ball of madness. So, <clears throat> But if instead, if instead you rem I remember that everything in my reality is a reflection of me, then I can create a life of perfect harmony. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to talk more about that because what I feel like doing is treating this video as a like a diary entry, essentially. This is just me talking to myself. This is this is this is just a diary entry. Um, so I'm just I'm just gonna be. That's it. I'm just I'm just here in my favorite toque. Um, my favorite toque, of course, that I have been with. This toque has been with me since I was twelve or younger even, and it has been I, it has been on my head. It doesn't matter how many more toques I buy, how many more toques people give me. This is the best one. I wear it all winter, every winter. I see it's getting kind of like a lump right here, but whatever. Um, and this toque has been on my head in all of my most transformative experiences in my life. I don't even like all of the big moments. If you look back at, at when I look back at my life and go big moment, big moment, big moment, this toque was on my head and it makes me feel safe and cozy. And I just have to wear it today because 
honestly, I, <laughs> today, the uh, um, full moon, Taurus, eclipse, man, um, it was emotional. I mean, the, the full moon is happening tonight, but I, I'm hoping that I got through like the purge process because I, I had to like cry, I had to cry it out because I, I could literally feel all of these old fears, all of these old, and like, what are fears? My, my old fears are limiters that I had placed on myself in order to keep myself down. And I can literally feel like more of them bubbling up. And it's like, again, how many times do I have to have a fear facing moment again, again, again? So I am curious to find out when the fear purging ends, like what, when, when does the, when does the purging process get easier? When do we get to get past that? I'm hoping at some point that we do. <laughs> um, but today was another, another moment because every time, every time we have more light, right? Every time we have more light come in, then it, it, it lights up more of our limiters and more of those fears that need to like bubble up. And unfortunately, as they bubble up, you need to like see them and like look at them and feel them one last time and then they go away. So um, I'm glad that's over and I'm very tired now. <laughs> I want to have a hot bath, but I'm out of bubble bath. I ordered some bath salts. They might be in the mailbox right now, but I don't know if they are. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> I was like spooked earlier, actually. I felt like... I don't know. The only way I could put it is like, I feel like something is coming. Like for me, for, for me, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's next. I don't know what the next thing is. Um... But at least at this point, I know when I have, you know, the fear, when I do the fear facing, at least I've done that enough times now that when I face the fear, I, I, I understand that it's just a cycle to go through. It's just a process to go through. And if I can just do it and then I get to the other side and then, and then I get to the other side. Now I know, I like, I know, I know, because I, I've lived this so many times by now. I know that on the other side of the fear is the party, right? <laughs> it's like walking through a dark tunnel and you don't know what's on the other side, but when you open up that door at the end of the tunnel, it's, it's a party. It's a party and everything is fantastic. And it's, but I don't know what the party is going to look like this time. I don't know. And it, this is really putting me back uh, to, man, today is like completing the cycle that I started in the full moon in Scorpio. which was when I recorded that Starseed Awakening video. And let me tell you, that was one of the most liberating things I have ever done because after you put your face on the internet and you say, I believe I'm an alien, <laughs> after you do that, and then you live a little, a few, you, you, you keep breathing for a few days after you do that, and then literally nothing happens, like nothing bad happens, but then good things start to happen, right? The, 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 nothing, nothing bad happened. No, nothing bad happened. I did it and nothing bad happened. And you know how many times I have been looking at doing something that I am intimidated of or afraid of doing. And then um, I go, Hey, I put my face on the internet and said, I believe I'm an alien. I can do anything. Like that was the worst. That, that, that was like as bad as it gets. <laughs> so, uh, so it's, it's like today, the, the fears that I had to face were completely nebulous. It was like I was just aware of fears being there, but they didn't even have a name. They didn't have a cause. They didn't have anything for me to even recognize as the fear. It was just like this residual fear energy. I want to be done with that. I want to be done with that. <laughs> Because it's like, on the one hand, I know that as we continue to evolve and grow, there's there's always another layer of clearing and upgrading. And every time you level up, it's like a fear-facing thing. And you're always walking out into the unknown. But I, I just, maybe I just hope, maybe it's just a hope. But I do feel like at some point you have to get past all of the, like, you got to get past the, like the, the worst of the purging, right? You got to get past the worst of the fear-facing. At some point... There has to be a checkpoint that you, <laughs> you get through and you've just, you know, you've made it, right? You know, you've made it. I, I, I want to be in that place where I know I've made it. No more backsliding, right? No more 10 steps forward, 20 steps back. 
type of situation. It's like, I want to know I've made it. I don't even, to where? Where have I made it to? <sighs> Maybe I'm already there because I experience so many days and weeks and hours of peace in my life now to an extent that I never thought was possible. Never. If I compare my state of being now to my state of being 10 years ago, it is unbelievable. I never thought that my life could be this good and this peaceful and this full of joy and this full of abundance and this full of everything and love and everything that I want and purpose and excitement, right? But I think where I get tripped up is I can't help but imagining how much better it can still be, right? How much better it can get. Because I know it just gets better. It just gets better. Like this is not the plateau, right? <laughs> this is not the plateau. One of the things I need to release is frustration. I get what well, earlier today, I was so frustrated, like just out of nowhere, like, uh, you know, younger me was so cosmically frustrated. I actually called it the great cosmic frustration. Great, I was cosmically frustrated and this is, I didn't even believe in cosmic things, right? I was just cosmically frustrated with how long everything took and how my entire life was waiting and how my entire life was hard work. And it was just like, uh, 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 uh and I constantly had frustration dreams where I would be trying desperately to get somewhere and trying desperately to do something, but I would be running like slow motion, right? And I would just be stuck in, in like this density. I would be stuck in density and it was just so frustrating. That was like uh, recurring nightmares for years. And, you know, man, I have been purging frustration. <laughs> My entire life has been, oops, I just kicked, oh well. Um, <laughs> my entire life has been purging the frustration, purging it over and over and over again. And in the last couple of years, I've really proud of myself, how well I've done, how I can sit, I can be patient, right? I can just be peaceful. I can enjoy the journey. I can do, I can do it. I can do good. I can do good at it. But of course, then a day like today comes along, <laughs> a lunar eclipse, full moon in Scorpio, full moon in full moon in Taurus, but in Scorpio season, which has of course been emotional. A day like today comes along and it's like all of those cosmic frustrations just bubble up. And I was getting frustrated about certain things in my life. Like, you know, I was just fixating on like, well, why don't I have more money? Right? <laughs> like I was fixating on that, but that was just the human excuse. Like I was just frustrated. Like how much, what do I need to do? Right? Like how much more do I need to do? I don't know what else to do, Blah. you know, that kind of frustration. But I, now that I've like relaxed you know, and gotten over it, I get that it's like the frustration of an old soul. I think we have like, we have this like old soul frustration is a unique, <laughs> a unique kind of frustration. How long, how long have you been here? Right? How long have we been here on earth? How long have we have been working? How long have we been sacrificing? It gets, see, like that gets me. It gets me just talking about it. It gets to be like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, oh my God. And it's so much more beyond that. It's like, what did you do just to get to earth? How many unfathomable, unfathomable eons of time did you spend lowering your frequency to travel down through all of the dimensions to be in a shattered enough state to even incarnate on earth, right? That's where the frustration is really coming from. But, you know, I'm so reminded, <laughs> someone's showing me, I'm so reminded of um, my sister when she was little, she was like, I don't know, grade three or something, maybe younger. She was in a cross country race and she raced, raced, raced. She ran all the way to the very end. She was like 
I don't know, 10 meters <laughs> from the finish line. And me and my mom were like cheering her on, cheering her on, like, go, 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 get to the finish line. And then she just like stopped running. And she just was like panting and like crying and like couldn't run anymore because she just run a whole cross country race and she was a little kid. But it was like, just, just get to the finish line. It's gonna take you longer to walk to the finish line than if you just keep running, right? <sighs> and it's like, I don't like receiving that message because I feel like, I feel like I've been getting this message of, you know, you're so close, don't give up now, don't give up before the miracle, don't, you know, keep going, you're almost there. I feel like I've been receiving that message for my entire life, right, for my entire life. So that message in and of itself makes me want to be like an angsty teenager. And I don't like receiving it. And even when I receive it from myself, right, when I'm telling myself, like, you know, get your shit together, like, you're, you're, you're being a dumbass, like, you know, <laughs> that that's the the... It's like the fact that the, the frustration is coming from the unfathomableness of the scope of the soul's journey that it took to get here. That's where the frustration is coming from. And on some level, that it, it's like we're trying to process that in the human vessel. How, 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 do, you, how do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> I, I guess by, you know, just spending your lifetime doing it and then basically getting over it, but then getting hit with it on days like a full moon eclipse, right? So, oh, yeah. Hopefully I won't be, I don't think I'll be experiencing any more frustration for a while. It was just like, really it was only like 20 minutes. I got it out of my system in 20 minutes. But it was not fun. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, the other, the other fear-facing thing today was, am I losing my mind? Have I completely lost my mind? And for the most part, I am like way over that. I'm like so over that. Like I, I, I had a turning point like a couple of years ago where I, I was like, okay, so either <laughs> like, how, how do I explain? I basically decided that there was no point in worrying about if I'm crazy as long as my crazy journey fills my life with love and peace and joy, right? I was like, what's the point in being sane if sanity makes me fucking miserable, right? I would rather be crazy and happy um, and peaceful and joyful and thriving in life, right? Even if it means I'm crazy. So I basically decided that I don't even need to worry about whether I'm crazy or not. That, 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 like I used to spend my whole life worrying about, am I losing my mind, right? Are all these things I'm thinking, receiving, channeling crazy, right? But I was like, it doesn't even matter. What does it matter if it's crazy, right? Because if I'm completely wrong, well, then, I, then I'm just dead when I die and then none of it mattered anyway. So it's like, I might as well be crazy and peaceful and joyful and thriving. I might, I might as well just go that route. And it's like, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, I know I'm not crazy. But of course, days like today, it comes back around and I'm like, am I totally fucking losing my mind? <laughs> <sighs> this is somehow related to the full moon in Taurus energy. My, my husband said something. He was like, you know, you're, <laughs> you're just so abstract that you follow, you're capable you're capable of following lines of abstraction out to such an extreme level that, you know, sometimes you can't track back. <laughs> sometimes you can't, sometimes there's like a, it, I mean, you do track back, but sometimes there's like a glitch as you track back and your, your tracking back is not smooth. And that is when you have these meltdowns going, am I losing my mind? Like I'm so frustrated, blah, 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 blah because you got stuck out in the level of, of, of abstraction that needs to be pulled back, right? Needs to be grounded. And it really strikes me that that is the theme of the Taurus full moon energy because on the one hand of the axis, you got Scorpio, which is all about the unseen, fears, death, transformation, um, transcendence too, right? All of that. 
um, in Taurus is that like that earth energy. Funny, my husband's a Taurus. <laughs> he, he was not rattled today at all. <laughs> um, Taurus is, you know, that like the purity of earth energy continuing on forever <laughs> in the face. Maybe that's why Taurus is so stubborn because it needs to be able to carry on while having this face off with the uncertainty of Scorpio energy forever, like cosmically, right? And whenever I think of a full moon, I think of, okay, so we got the Scorpio season vibe going on and then the full moon pulls out of it and now it's contrasting over here with the full moon in Taurus and there's it's this opposition that but this opposition where the energies are directly connected and it allows both sides to see each other more clearly so it's like I want to think about it that way it makes starting starts to make more sense about why I had to purge frustration today and also why I had this like am I losing my mind moment because <laughs> that was me trying to ground the scorpionic unknowable data ground it into the earth energy of Taurus interesting <sighs> I think I've talked myself out. <laughs> End of diary. Although now, now that I have said that, I would like to just, since this is a diary entry and I'm only talking to myself, I'm gonna take a minute to fucking celebrate, <laughs> okay? Um, because it's, it's really crazy that I actually made all 24 of the videos. Actually, I only made 23 videos and I was actually, I was worried about that because I put two keys in one video and then I realized that I would have 24 keys in 23 videos and I was like, well, should I make an extra video? Like, what should I do? And then I was reminded that human chromosomes, we would have had 24 pairs of chromosomes, like, you know, our biological ancestors have 24 chromosomes, right? Great apes. Um, so it, it's always like, why do humans only have three, 23? It's because two of the pairs of chromosomes were fused together. <laughs> and when I, as soon as I remembered that, I was like, okay, so the fact that I put two keys in one video, fused them together, and now we have 23 and 24 instead of 24. I, I, I don't understand, like, I don't, I'm not saying there's any connection there, but like, you know, once I saw that, I was like, okay, good enough good enough for me i'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about making a 24th video just <laughs> right it's kind of just kind of funny um but i can't believe i actually stuck it out and made all of this because i am so lazy and like so lazy so uh, so lazy i don't like to do anything i don't like to do anything ever <laughs> but i did it i did it I did them and I did them not by thinking and planning because if I had thought and planned, I never would have done them. I did them just by following my intuition and flowing and receiving the inspiration of how to do everyone. And I mean, as much as I hope that these videos will serve a few people, <laughs> I can absolutely see how this was just like me going to cosmic school and learning <laughs> everything <laughs> learning everything and it's really really shown me how i can get way more stuff done and how i can just like be creative and really benefit from the creative process if i just like do it if i just do it the way i make these videos then you know i always feel great after after making every single one of these videos every single time i made one i felt fantastic ever because it allowed me to channel all of this energy that of course i could channel like sitting and meditating or something but i find that the creative process of making the video um, is like really, it like locks it in somehow. It makes it more, makes it more real. It makes it more real. And it, it, even if only like one person watches, right? It's like, that doesn't, that's like irrelevant. It's like irrelevant who's watching. <laughs> it's irrelevant who's watching for, for, for me in terms of making the videos. And that is the most liberating thing ever, right? Ever. I, cause it's I, I I think I think I think I can say I have absolutely grounded this lesson of 
don't think about outcomes. That's been a lesson I've had to learn so hard. Don't think about outcomes, right? Don't think about outcomes. Never, never think about the outcome when, I, when I'm trying to do something. Because I used to only ever think in terms of how to, how to get to an outcome and then I would think my way about how to get there. No, just think about the inspiration and then just do it and then the outcome is relevant. That's not, it's like literally not my fucking problem. Who, who like sees any, any video I ever post, it's not my problem. It's like, the, that's the universe's problem, right? If somebody is supposed to see a video I post, that's the universe's problem to like get them to, to like bring the video to their attention. It's not my problem. I don't need to worry about it. And that is apparently the key to me being productive, <laughs> like, or, or being in the creative flow, right? Not ever worrying about an outcome and just existing. And this video is taking it to a next level, right? <laughs> I'm actually reminded that so many times over the years, before I started this YouTube channel, I would like every once in a while, like record like a video diary to myself. And I always felt like I was supposed to record, like make videos. Like I was like, that I was supposed to do something, you know, daily-ish. And, and I could never like get it going. Um, but I've actually stuck with this for almost two years now. And it blows my mind that I've done it. So I'm just, it's just my moment, my moment to celebrate and give myself credit. <sighs> yes because it means that I, now I can use this newfound skills <laughs> and confidence in my ability to, who, who knows what's next, right? I won't really understand the context of these videos for years, probably. In, in a few years, I'll be able to look back and go, wow, if I hadn't done those, then I wouldn't be doing blah, right? <laughs> and I'm now reminded of, I'm just seeing my tarot cards up here. It's so funny that I do tarot cards and because when I was a kid, when I was a little girl, I would wait till it got dark. You want to come here waffles? Waffles wants to say hi. Yeah. Yeah, waffles. Now you're in the video. Hmm? What do you think? Oh, don't. He scored a point. Gross. <laughs> I love you waffles. Yes, he's a good boy. Okay, let me finish. Now he's got his toy. <laughs> what was I trying to remember? Oh yeah, when I was a little girl, I would wait till it got dark. Then I would go to clear off my desk. Then I would light some candles and then I would take some rocks, just like regular rocks that I found outside. And I would put them on my desk. And then I would take a deck of playing cards, like good old like bicycle playing cards. We always had lots of cards because my mom was like really into playing poker and stuff, right? Um, and I would just shuffle the playing cards and then I would flip them and just lay them out and I would look at them. And I would be like in the candlelight. And then I would like write in my diary. <laughs> I wasn't even playing solitaire. I would literally, I was just always drawn to shuffling cards and to drawing them and looking at them. Um, I, I just, I felt like that was a natural thing to do. <laughs> and, and then I got older and I thought that was silly. And then I stopped doing it. Clearly, clearly, um, tarot cards. I, it was, it was meant, it was meant to be, right? It was a thing from another life. So always, right? Always do that thing that you think that makes no sense. Always do the thing that makes no sense. If you, you find yourself like aping out weird anything, weird random anything, because there's a reason you're doing that. It's, that's your soul trying to tell you something. <laughs> so, I just feel like setting an intention. Next time, I feel the weird <laughs> impulse to do something completely random like that. I'm going to do it and we will see where that goes. And now my little dog. Yes, Waffles. I know. Can you let me turn off the camera without barking? Can you do that? Sit. Stay. <laughs>